Hello, everyone, and welcome to this preview of our patron exclusive episode on Starship Troopers. This film was the winner of a very close vote between three very different movies, and kind of surprisingly, Starship Troopers came out on top. But it ended up being great because I had never seen it, and as you will shortly hear me talk about, it was quite the experience and made for a very fun conversation. To hear the full conversation, head to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon. The link is in the show notes. And we will be back this Friday with our episode on Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? But for now, here's Starship Troopers. Hello, patrons, and welcome to this patron-exclusive episode of Beyond the Screenplay. Today, in a wonderful example of the inherent flaws in first-past-the-post voting systems, we're talking about <laughs> Starship Troopers, the 1997 <laughs> film written by Edward Neumeyer and Robert A. Heinlein, directed by Paul Verhoeven. I'm joined by Trisha Rand. Hello. Brian Bittner. Hi. <laughs> and Alex Cajeros. Hi. <laughs> some, something's going on. Wow. It's because it's of Memento. We did Memento troopers. backwards. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're oh, yeah. No, it's because it's because you patrons are maniacs. Lady Bird versus Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> we're like, which one's going to take it? Which one's going to take it? And then out of nowhere, Starship Troopers. Out of nowhere. This is the problem with democracy. <laughs> I think this is this is a triumph of democracy. I'm so happy. <laughs> We need to do one where nobody can, where they can't see the results, right? So then we just yes, like to yeah. get yes. I feel like that's my big takeaway is that Patreon does not have the correct infrastructure to truly get <laughs> mm. um, the, the real spirit of, of the vote that people have. But either way, we yeah. love watching you guys vote and comment and everything. And <laughs> yes, we're, yes. we're here for it. <laughs> it, was, it was a nail biter. It for was. Sure. I just didn't know what I was going to watch until right at the very last. <laughs> right. We yeah. were all preparing for Lady Bird. And then <laughs> yeah. suddenly right. Starship Troopers. <laughs> and I was by two votes, I believe, also that Starship I wrote Troopers a long letter to Greta Gerwig and set it off. And yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, that's, and now we're going to talk about Starship Troopers. Uh, okay. So. I had not seen this movie. I had seen parts of it. Uh, I think I remember vaguely when it came out, friends of mine talking about it and referring to it, but I never would have been allowed to see this movie. Um, I play StarCraft, and a lot of StarCraft, I think, is inspired by this movie. A lot like of video Zerg. games. Mm. Yeah. Like overall. Right. A lot of yeah. that makes, yeah. Um, so it was really fascinating to sit down and watch this movie from start to finish. And it was not at all what I was expecting. I think I'd seen, you know, the newsreel footage stuff. So I knew there was some kind of silliness. I'd seen some of the shooting bugs and explosions and gore stuff from like visual effects, you know, documentaries and reels and stuff like that. Um, but I had no idea how much of a love triangle love story, the like mm -hmm. the plot focuses on that a lot uh, <laughs> right. and it was like a just a, like a one after another surprise 90s kind of b-list actor star yeah, right thing it's more happened. of a quadrangle in fairness right. the, the love there are four oh, people sure because yeah. there's the guy Don't with forget the hair Diz. oh and that guy yeah exactly yeah oh and Diz. Xander. yeah yeah right yeah yeah uh yeah so there was just a lot more time spent on character development uh <laughs> than i was expecting <laughs> but that it i think it paid off and that like structurally it was weirdly competent and halfway through the movie shortly after i was like i have no idea what's going to happen next in this movie like i truly do not know where this is going and what's going to happen and that is very rare to like for me to have that in a movie um so yeah, I was entertained and surprised. A lot of my notes are like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Some of the other notes are like, this is the best thing ever. Um, <laughs> Starship Troopers. <laughs> Starship Troopers. Yeah, and I, I so uh, a film professor that Alex and I had, when I tweeted about this, he tweeted this response, which was, uh, yeah, Ed O'Neill, I like to think of this director as a very great director with really bad taste. And I had not heard that take before. And I was like, that clicks for me. I think that's uh, a thing that I will be thinking about and that would be fun to talk about and investigate more. 
Um, also, surprise, Amy Smart. Yeah, it was super weird and like so all these '90s people. It was super Clancy weird. Brown. Um, mm-hmm. And then like some twist and surprises at that. Like Diz, I like Diz. Mm. Diz, that that got me a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I ended up crying your liking eyes out. this movie. <laughs> <laughs> not cr- not crying my eyes out, but like <laughs> at the end, I was like, I think I'm happy that I spent two hours doing that which I never would have expected before. So that was my first ride on Starship Troopers. Uh, Alex, tell me about your experience with this movie. So the, yeah, the main exposure I've had to Paul Verhoeven before this movie was Total Recall, which I love to watch for just the pure camp factor. Just the weirdness of that era of Arnold Schwarzenegger playing like normal guys and in the most insane sci-fi universe with the most insane prosthetics and visual effects. Uh, it's just one of my favorite, like kind of just, you know, get baked and watch like a really insane thing. <laughs> Movies. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the few times that you've shown me a movie that I feel like I still can't forgive you for. Like, I'm just <laughs> so unhappy <laughs> that you made me watch that movie. So deeply unpleasant. Just yes. wow. Every moment of it is just grating on your aesthetic Why would anyone do this or show this to people or think that anyone wants to see it? The, the <laughs> suit yeah, where the, the lady comes apart and there's a person underneath all those insane moments. He didn't like mm-hmm. any of those. Just three nipples and, yeah. and uh, disgusting yeah. melting Somehow, faces. Somehow what every Arnold's, man remembers from that movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> just suffocating on the Mars surface, but then yeah. returning to normal after his eyes Horrific. popped out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, anyway. So yeah. so that's what I know about <laughs> Paul Verhoeven. So I was <laughs> excited because I had not seen Starship Troopers. I knew I was supposed to because it is like this interesting... I had heard that it was kind of a satire and it actually is kind of about fascism. Um, but I also knew it was from this director that had been this other really bonkers sci-fi movie that I found wonderfully campy. So uh, I was excited to watch this movie and yeah, wow. Like when, I, when it first started, they were in like the high school classroom and just Denise Richards, <laughs> like it's just like, this is the yeah. most 90s thing I could ever like imagine. Like these people were built in like a 90s movie factory, you know, Casper, <laughs> Casper Van Dien, like just yep. these people, like, I, like these aren't real people. Like what, what is this? What am I looking at? They're like, they're prom. <laughs> like this is so, like where, like what year is this supposed to be? Like, where are we in like time or history or place? Uh, they're in Buenos Aires. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like, is that part of the story world that just American white people have taken over the world? Like, what is this movie trying to tell me? Um, anyway, so it was just a wild ride watching this film because then there were times where it's like this, you know, piloting this big ship scene kind of feels like a fun like Star Trek scene. You know, the Enterprise leaving the dock and the hotshot pilot cutting it close. That just seems just kind of like an earnest fun 90s sci-fi moment and then other moments are like hey surprise we're cutting to this news footage of a mormon outpost and on a planet and look it's just guts everywhere just guts and severed bodies and uh like no no warning just like that's just like the news broadcast in this universe we just like pan across like pure body horror um so just this constant roller coaster ride of like what is this movie what is its tone like is it a satire some moments seemed very clearly that way. Other moments seemed very earnest in a not satirical way. And it seemed like his aesthetic was just kind of a Paul Verhoeven, like 90s aesthetic. It didn't seem like it was necessarily trying to be a parody a lot of the time. So I don't know. It was just a wild ride. I wish I had more time to like watch it again and think about it more because I just watched it last night. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited to talk about this movie because it was like you said, Michael, it was an interesting experience of both. I'm just laughing out loud at how bad this is. And then that was actually pretty good. There was a lot of weird going back and forth. Uh, and like some of the sequences with the bugs were actually like well done. And the visual effects in those moments could be very, very good. And then at yeah. other times it looks like this is a goddamn soap opera, you know, shot right. with the flattest lighting you could imagine. You know, right. like the just, knife in uh, is it Jake Busey's yeah, hand. No, it's yeah. just like suddenly his hand is like six times too big. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, weird prosthetics. Yeah, just yeah, it, it 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 felt like the man who made Total Recall. So it, it yeah. adds up. And, I, and now I want to explore more of his filmography for sure. 
One of my notes was just, I hate this lighting. Um, <laughs> right. yeah, so that's, also, this font is bad. Uh, was an <laughs> yeah, early right. note. Yeah. Also, Space Mountain. Bad. There's a lot of space them Mountain. getting into Space Mountain. Yeah. Like, this is 100% where like. Space Mountain came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, or maybe the other way around yeah yeah, yeah. um okay cool trisha t- <laughs> tell me about starship troopers um so i have i saw this movie for the first time not super long ago i think it was within the last five years um but i'm, I'm pretty familiar with verhoeven's filmography uh obviously i love robocop and i love total recall and basic instinct is a masterpiece of the erotic thriller and like you know I, i've caught a lot of his more recent films like l and benedetta um which are excellent and so i was definitely like interested in this because i also remember not being allowed to watch it when it came out um and I see why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, those that listen regularly will know that I don't have a stomach for the graphic violence. Um, and like the sci fi stuff that he does is like <laughs> usually pretty violent, but I can kind of like dodge around it by some selective watching. But in this movie, it's like very everywhere all the time. Um, And so it's really hard for me to get through on the first time around. And I know it's corny and I know it's fake. Um, But as you pointed out, a lot of the, like, some of the creature work in this is really good. And some of the practical effects are also really effective. And I don't know, I just have a lot of um, empathy. And so... Like people picked up and ripped in half by aliens. Like to me, I know it's fake, but I'm like, that's a person. And I just can't. And it's hard for me to deal with. Um, All that being said, uh, I have actually read a little bit of the Heinlein novel. I've read quite a few. I've read a few of Heinlein's novels. Um, And like Paul Verhoeven before me, I gave up on getting it all the way through (laughs) Starship Troopers and couldn't get into it. Uh, it's pretty militaristic and just kind of like, you you know, you guys mentioned not knowing whether or not the movie is supposed to be satire. There is no doubt that the book is not satire. Mm. It is mm. very earnest um, and very like Heinlein wrote it in response to the United States saying they were going to stop all um, nuclear weapons testing. And Heinlein was like, no, wait, we need nuclear weapons for (laughs) keeping peace in the world. And so he like wrote Starship Troopers as a response to that. That was like, but actually Naked Force solves all the problems ever. Um, Which was the line in the movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. So I, I gave up reading the book. So I'm going to, I'm going to admit that I, I did not read the whole thing, but I can tell you that Fairhoven's take here is razor sharp satire and very interesting and worth, like certainly worth watching uh, and talking about for that reason alone. Um, And is actually also wildly entertaining. Right. And I think that's Mm. part of the reason why, like it, it gives you those conflicted feelings because you're just like, I shouldn't think this is fun in any way. (laughs) This is an example of how, like all of this stuff is like bad, bad, everybody bad. Look, <laughs> these guys are Nazis. Um, and here they are destroying, like committing a genocide. This is not supposed to be funny or fun, but it is. It's so funny and fun in so many ways. And uh, the acting is like <laughs> in like incredibly pitch perfectly bad, but like right. earnest, you think? Consistent. Like, you, you, like, yeah, it's like Denise Richards is the perfect example, right? Like she can't <laughs> deliver a line. <laughs> At all, but she's cut, but she's really trying. Like, it seems like none of the actors know they're in a satire right. in a way that is like really work somehow. <laughs> it's like they truly think they're in a, just like a shoot 'em up good time Space Marines movie. Um, anyway, it's fascinating. It's so fascinating. Um, great job, patrons. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you pay yeah. for. Yeah, cool. Well, yes, we'll. Truly. we'll we, Definitely need to dive into that more. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Brian. Yeah, I saw this uh, back in, I don't know exactly when, but within the first few years of when it came out. So uh, probably around 2001 or two. Um, and 
I don't remember having any having any strong opinions about it back then, but I know that I didn't wasn't really looking for it to be anything other than just like a average sci-fi movie. So I certainly wasn't looking for any satire or anything. Um, but I have a friend who is a big fan of it, and he and he has talked many times about um, why this movie works and stuff. And and I don't know how often I listen, um, but it was definitely a movie where I had seen the like the overall kind of discussion about it change over the years. And I think the, the early reviews of this movie were like, Oh, it's just kind of a bad sci-fi movie. And then the later reviews, like, as in like over the past 10 years, people have been like, Oh no, it's clearly like a, like a sharp satire. Like how did people not get this? And I think those were my two experiences watching this movie, which was watching it back then where I was just like, you know, I don't know, in college and not really paying that much attention to what the movie was trying to say, if anything. And then now watching it and having seen more of Verhoeven's films and more, um, you know, coming out of a movie like Don't Look Up recently or something and seeing movies mm -hmm. that are just like we are leaning all the way into the satire um, and just thought, oh, yeah, of course. Um, but one of some of what we want to get into is like, but then sometimes the movie's not leaning all the way into it. Like where Don't Look Up is like we are going to lean so hard into this that you actually are going to end up caring about the characters. But because be, because you're coming along with us for this like this crazy kooky ride right this movie is like hey crazy kooky ride very satirical newsreels and everything like get it wink 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 and then it's melrose space and you're just kind of like wait but i kind of do care about these characters but then like one of them dies and it and like but their head blows up and you know and it's just right. kind of like teehee we just lost our best friend like wait what right. like and it's just so it's like tonally so weird um but as you were saying trisha it's just it's a it's a lot of fun you know and i think that like that is what verhoven does really well is he just makes movies that feel like you have to turn off your is this good is this bad brain and mm -hmm. just go uh, and just go but i'm going to have fun you know and that's true of showgirls and it's true of benedetta like it, it's yeah. it's very different movies that he's made but they all kind of have that like look i'm not trying to make a masterpiece i'm trying to make something that you're just gonna have a really good time watching um so it's really cool to revisit this and i and yeah i want to get into some of the satire of what works and what doesn't um but uh but yeah i just i just like i'm really glad that we're i'm, I'm glad that we're here <laughs> Thank you, patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, <laughs> I am too. Um, hope you enjoyed that preview of our episode on Starship Troopers. To continue the conversation, head over to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon, where the full episode is waiting right now. The link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.